uh, we're back. Uh, we showed you the uh, components. We showed you the setup. Now we're going to go over uh, basic gameplay with you um, and, and uh, uh, card attributes. Um, we'll start with that so you kind of know, uh, you know the anatomy of a card because if you don't know the anatomy of the card, how are you going to play a card game, right? Oh, All right. Details of Jeb's it. Gonna, this, is, this is a skill card, uh, but um, in general, the top of your card has the name. It has the type of card it is. Uh, in the for the skills, usually in in there's a center line, and it tells you what it does. Um, the basic melee attack has a picture of a sword. It says plus one. Guess what? This card may or that's not the yeah. It just the yeah, plus one adds it, one to your basically, attack. Basically, that's your attack. Um, your defenses have a picture of a shield, um, and your ranged attacks have a picture of a bow. So if I play that card, I now have a plus one attack. The effect yeah. on the card? Right. Uh, it depends mm -hmm. on what type of card. For this one, it, it says this card may only be acquired immediately after dealing one or more wounds to a monster from a melee attack. So unlike some deck builders where you just pay uh, some of these cards actually have acquiring uh, requirements as well so in addition to that effect all of the cards are going to have this uh, box in the bottom right and if it's red it means that's what you have to pay in order to get it and you pay via experience points and if you remember what Jeb said you start with zero. you start with zero so uh, look at that. This is a zero to acquire, but it has the requirement of right. doing a damage using a melee. So. Exactly. Which is, th th that is actually one of the components to this game that I found very unique. These, um, most deck builders, they have basic cards that you can purchase. These, you actually have to do something to be able to acquire these cards. Yep. Um, so... And since you don't start out with any experience, and the only way to get experience is killing monsters, you're kind of hosed at the beginning of the game until you start actually doing stuff. Yeah. Um, so it that that aspect I found very very unique. That uh, you know some of these cards actually make you have to do something in order to be able to acquire them. Um, and like most deck builders, in your starting deck, it's like money cards and yep. whatever other card. Yep. This has no money cards. It's nope. and all it, attack and it, defense. Right, because that's how you're going to either be able to acquire your first cards or you're going to be able to kill a monster to acquire experience points, which brings me to a monster card that Jeb can hold up now so that you can see the uh, slight difference in anatomy. Uh, so, the, of course, you have the name of the monster at the top. In the middle of these, though, you have how much life they have, which is the heart, and then the number after it. You have their attack value, which uh, in the goblins' case is a three, and then they have a uh, defensive value. In the uh, goblins' case, he has um, nothing. Uh, he has no special abilities, so the uh, text in his, his is blank. The important thing to note is the green box... Um, in the bottom right hand corner for him tells you what you acquire when you are the one that does deals the final blow to that monster the first little lightning bolt in a jar is experience points and then the crown is victory points which are how you win the game yeah you don't actually keep track of the victory points until the game ends then you right. go through all your cards and just add them up then so uh, the key thing is the box in the bottom right, if it's red, it means you have to pay that. If it's green, it means you get that. Right. We'll probably get to it again, but just keep in mind that like those monsters are a one-time thing because after that, you don't play them. They just clog your hand. Yes. The, the monsters will mention later again that when you kill them, they go to the discard pile of the person who kills them. 
and right. eventually your discard gets shuffled back into your deck, and then when you, you draw, draw that, of, it's just dead. Right. So it's not like you're going to get those experience points again. Right. Uh, so, like in a lot of other games, if you put the thing in there and then you play it, it's worth something. Yeah. They're a one-time deal, so they're kind of good and kind of bad at the same time. But if you you play deck builders and you're like, well, then that makes it a horrible thing, well, there's actually some of the blue cards that are like, if you discard a monster card, you get to Stuff, like, yeah. do so whatever. So they, they did some some pretty unique things. Yeah. So uh, I guess before we do all the gameplay stuff, a quick overview is that players are going to choose a scenario and play it over multiple areas. So that's the, the key term is area. And once you finish an area you're going to move on to the next area, and you just keep doing that over and over until somebody wins or loses. And they call it an area. You could equate it with a round. Yeah. Um, I, another reason why I kind of, like when you're playing it, I kind of got a tower defense feel for it, which, again, goes oh, along with more like waves. area. Right, it's like a wave. Yeah. So, again, um, th that's that's kind of how I viewed it. So yeah, an area but would be a wave in the tower. Defense. I'm not the designer. He can call it whatever he wants. <laughs> That's how I like to imagine it, though. Yeah. And then the object of the game is to gain the victory points through kills, uh, which you saw on the the enemy cards is the, the crown and the number behind it. You're going to gain those, and whoever has the most at the end of the game wins. So that's the whole object of the game. And this game can be played cooperatively or competitively. Okay. So, to begin gameplay, uh, the first thing you want to do is populate the battle area. So, this only happens at the beginning of a new area. So, the first thing we're going to do is determine the first player and draw your hand. So, the first player goes to however you want to determine it. Right, it I don't matter. think they had anything in there. Nah, that. yeah, just do it however you want. And then you will draw a hand of six cards. So, take your deck. Draw th one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably can't see that. I moved it over now. And that's your hand of cards. Next is to is the the first player is going to draw an area feature card. The they're the green back cards. You just draw one. Uh, oh, we got an empty area. Empty area says this card has no effect. <laughs> so for this entire area, this is in play. There's no special abilities. Let me read you one that actually has some text, though. Foul Fungus Patch. So if I had drawn Foul Fungus Patch, it's a hazard. All, I don't, I think that means humanoid monsters. It's got a little picture of it. No. Um, it, it has an icon. The icons are right on the monster cards. This guy has like a like a bodybuilder flexing. I think it's like it means that like one's he's... A small on him, but I don't know if the large one has the same picture. Well, anyways, yeah, it's it has all monsters with that symbol with goblin in their name gain uh, one life or one extra heart. I guess is the best way to say that, and remove one wound token if any at the end of the turn okay so the area is like the round so a turn is just like everybody's turn I think right yeah so well there's the within a round is a mercenary turn and then a monster turn right so right there so not only do they get an extra health but they get uh, healing through the entire uh, area or round however you want to say it so that's an example of one of the area effects that actually does something. Um, us showing you empty area was kind of lame. <laughs> but it would. But anyway, but that is. Have. But that is what we we were we started out with, which is actually pretty good because you don't have to worry about extra effects before you're you got some power built up. Yeah. So you would just put this off to the side, um, and, uh, and and that would be an effect. Now. And keep in mind that if. These these would come into play if there were certain things like you could put these on all those goblin monsters. Right, that's exactly what I was going to say. So the next step um, is going to be populating monsters, 
And since that area effect that we showed you for an example of something that had a, a, a universal effect, we would take those AFs and put them on all the goblins, and then we would automatically remember yep. that, oh, we need to look at the area effect card and remember that the goblins heal and or have an extra uh, health during combat, so, you know, we might not be able to kill them quite as easily. Yeah. Uh, and as Mickey said, the next thing after you draw the area feature card is to spawn monsters for the area. And this is done by the first player drawing monster cards based on the player count. And we're just going to say we're doing a three player cooperative. So that would be draw four cards from the monster deck. Okay. And again, just like the table that Jeb read to create the deck, there's a little table in there that tells you how many cards you pick depending on how many players and what kind of scenario that you're choosing. And you just said four, right? Four, yep. All right, so I draw the top one, and I look at the card, and it is, uh, oh, I started with an ambush. Ooh. Let me start with something different or just go right into it? Uh, you can just go with it. Okay, so the ambush cards are bad. Because what happens with an ambush card? I read the card, and it's going to tell me what to take out of the reserve and populate. So, I got Ambush Orc. Ambush Orc says draw two Orc monster cards from the reserve monster deck and add them to the monster for this area. And then you discard that ambush card. Now, the back row... For the monsters, which you play this as two sides. So heroes are down there. I don't think we populated Not that yet. yet. And monsters start at this side. Alright? And this is this is reserved for ranged, right? Ranged is the back row. Right. And then I go to the middle row, or the next sorry, the next row, and I put it as close to the middle as I can. Yeah, so the very top row is for ranged. The next row down is for melee, and when you place it, you want to go to the center of the board. Right. So. so then I have two of them, so that guy will go right there. Okay. So that was just one card Mickey drew. That's right. So yeah. he's going to draw another. And, oh, look, I got an orc. So I, again, go to that row, and I'll put it on that side. This is card number three. I now have a goblin. I will continue to spread them out. And then my last card, I got a Goblin Archer. Great. So I got a ranged one. I'll go ahead and put it on that spot. All right. And then just a couple quick things. If you draw the Champion Monster, it's placed in the ranged row, whether it's ranged or melee. Just remember, right. Champions go in the very back. because they're right. They the start in the back, and remember, you're not going to see him for a while, because yeah. if you remember, we put the Champion in on the with those uh, 10 cards at the bottom. We just don't know when he's coming out. And then there's also a rule that if there's ever one card left in the deck, you just draw it. So if there's five cards in the deck, and on this turn we draw four, that means there's one left, you just draw that, and that'll be the last round, or the last area. Because they don't want you to populate something with just That's a couple cards, yeah. because you would, you would crush the scenario. So in order to keep it balanced, or actually a little, re yeah. relatively difficult, they're like, okay, if you're only, if you, you only got one left. I'm surprised they almost didn't say if there's, you know, one or two, two or one or yeah. two left. But anyways, that's, that's the rule. Okay, and then that's populating the monsters. Uh, after you do that, you will place the mercenary cards. So the first player picks first, and then in clockwise order, you place on the mercenary row, which is the very bottom yeah. row. Hey, can they see that? They can see okay. half of it. Okay, so I'm going to put, I'm going to go all the way in the corner. And then uh, there's also a, it mentioned in the rule book that right now no Let's pick a couple guys out just for giggles since we're playing with three people. Making him be by himself in the uh, corner. Yeah, Mickey stinks. We put him over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it mentions in the rule book that no cards can be played during this time. So I guess in later areas, if you have something that could go off, right. you're not allowed to play it right now. So. That's the populating the battle area phase, which is only done at the beginning of a new area. Uh, after the first area, this phase just consists of moving the first player token to the next person. So in the next area, 
it, the first player is going to be a different person. Right. Now, um, which it reminds me, uh, Jeb and I, the first time we played this, we did that wrong. Yeah. We were playing, we, we would go around uh, each of, we would, we would do a mercenary turn, and we were passing the first player. Yeah. And that, that uh, the area doesn't end until all the monsters have been killed. Right. That is the end of the area. That's when first person Passes. changes. Yeah. We were doing it after every one of us had taken a turn. We were moving it, and that is incorrect. And I think that's an important thing to point out because what we were doing is very typical of a, a lot, a lot of other yeah. games. And this, you've got to wait till you and clear it actually, everything. It does matter in this because of the way yeah, that it does. enemy ranged attacks work. Yep. So. Uh, anyhow, that is it for populating the battle area. So the first thing on a turn is the mercenary turn. So what happens is this, it goes, it starts with the first player and then goes clockwise. So the first thing you do is draw your hand, but since this is the first area, you already have a hand. But when it comes around again, you're going to draw your six cards. So that's that. The first thing you do is draw six cards. Next thing you do is resolve any effects. So you would look in the book to see if there's any special effects going on, like the the could web a, or it, the fire. Right. You could have something on you. Um, the monsters could have something on them. The area could be doing something. Now is the time that you resolve any uh, effects in play. Yep. And then also, is this is the time where you would do regeneration, health, and minus health. Uh, and what that is, is if your HP is ever zero or less you're considered minus health and what happens in this phase is you regain one hit point if you're still zero or less then you're still minus health uh, when you're minus health you cannot attack or play skill ranged or melee cards but you can play defense cards ability cards and you can move right. so. so basically you can try to get away from stuff, and you can cower in the corner with your shield and put it over your head and hope you don't get hit. <laughs> yep, and hope you regain your health All right. to do something later on. Exactly. After you resolve the effects, you can do two. Th you can either move and then attack, or you can attack and then move. There's no splitting movement in this game. So movement, the way it, it works, is your card, or I guess your mercenary card, will move orthogonal, so no diagonals. Right. And you can move along the row as many spaces as you want and or move forward or back one. So right. Mickey will show you some examples. Okay. So I'm going to move this card it just so that it's very clear that you guys can see. So we're going to pretend that I'm here. So what I can do is I can go along this any way that I want, as far as I want. I can go backwards one, or I can go forwards one, okay? So, that's, that's the basic movement. So, a couple examples. I could move all the way to here, and move up one, or move back one. I could go up here first, and then do my side to side. What I can't do is go here, move up one, and then come down here. So it's only a one of each type of movement. Yep, and the reason for that is because other cards can block your movement. Right. So if Mickey wanted to get here, he can't because purple's in the way. Right, so I can't, because I'd have to at least go up one, and even though I could go over, I've already used my upper back, so I I can't go back. Um, and same with the monsters. They get to move too, so they could be blocking stuff. So I, hopefully that makes sense. You've got side to side, as far as you want, up or back, one space, but not both. Yep. And if there's any missing tiles, you can't move go through. Right. And then another thing I have is if you are adjacent to a monster that can attack and you move away from it, then it lashes out. So no matter what player, uh, no matter what, the player still moves away and an active token is put on the monster and multiple monsters can lash out in a certain order. Right. 
So what that means is if you're if Mickey is next to So if I am up here and I'm like I have to get away. Um because I can still play defense and maybe I don't want to risk it because I have no attack or what for whatever reason. And then I'm like I got to get out of here. So I go I go back one. He basically if you want to do our, our um role playing game terms he gets an attack of opportunity. So he swings at me, but that's his activation for the turn. So I put that he's activated. So at least he's kind of used up. So you can kind of use that for a strategy too. But he did swing at me, and he swings for a whopping four. So I better hope that I have some shields, because if I don't, I'm taking four in the face. And another key thing is when you move away, you always move away. In some games, if you get attacked or whatever, right. you'd have to stay in your same spot. But this one, you always break free no matter what. Right. You, there's no there's no checks or anything like that, you, you know. Um, so, so, so you're good. Um, and, and it just happens. Yeah. And we'll get into <clears throat> how the attacks work in a minute, but he would have gotten to attack if I moved away from him. Yeah. So let's reset that, take that away. Uh, All right. The next thing is attacking that a player can do. It's done before or after you move. You use the cards in your hand. Uh, melee attacks can only be done to adjacent monsters, and diagonals don't count because this is orthogonal game. Uh, ranged attacks are can only hit monsters in the within the range that is on the card. And if multiple cards, if multiple ranged cards are played. You take the lowest uh, minimum and the highest maximum for the range. So, pretty much what it's saying is if you, if Mickey is, I don't know what's in your hand. Do you have the ranged? I do have a ranged. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's start with a ranged and we'll go over, well, there's only two types of attacks yeah. ranged and melee, but I have a ranged attack. So, I'll read you the basic ranged card. It's a minimum range of two, so I have to at least be two away and a maximum range of two so I can't go any farther than that now the way ranged works in this game and it keeps it really simple you don't have to worry about line of sight you don't have to worry about anything like that um, the minimum range uh, well let me just tell you what ranged is ranged is number of rows yes is strictly how it is so the minimum range on that is two so the maximum range is two so basically I can shoot Two, ra two rows away. So I'm right here. One, two. I can hit anything in this row. Yep. Period. If I'm over here, I can still hit this card over here because it's two rows away. They keep it really straightforward. You don't care about anything in this row or, or anything like that. Um, so I would be able to play this card. It does one range damage. I pick an orc. I put a damage on him. And notice that the minimum range is two, so if you're standing next to an orc, you cannot use it on the orc that you're next to. Right. So, which makes sense, because it's a, it's a ranged attack. Right. But, Mickey, what if you wanted to use a melee attack? Alright, so, if I was adjacent, and adjacent, remember, is all orthogonal, and I would play a sword, and I only have one, what do you mean? Uh, but... Uh, any of the attacks you can you, know, you can keep stacking them. So yes. if I have multiple swords, I can do uh, the orcs have a five life. So if I had five of those cards and I dropped them all down, I would kill the orc. Yes. So, um, but I don't. So I have one melee. I would take a one skull and I would put it on Mr. Orc right here so that we remember that he has now been damaged once. Um, this would go into my discard pile. Uh, another thing you can do on your turn is acquire cards, and the way these work is you can acquire one card per turn, and that's listed on the player board. Yep. Uh, you can do it at any time, as long as you meet the requirements for the card that you're acquiring. You get the cards from the resource area. Uh, like I said, you meet the acquiring condition and you spend the experience. Uh, I think that's everything. It's placed yeah. on the spot on the mat, 
and then put into the discard at the end of the rank, or end of the turn. Okay, so. so for instance, I just damaged a monster. Basic melee attack says right on the card, this card may only be acquired immediately after dealing one or more wounds to a monster from a melee attack. I just did a melee attack. I dealt one damage. If I haven't acquired a card already this turn, I can now, since this card here costs no experience points, I can take one from my turn and put it there. That's why this slot's so important because it reminds you that you haven't bought a card. Because remember, you can do it when, whenever. Um, so if I have a def, like if when it's the monster's turn and I play defense. You can I could have might have been turn. like, oh, I wanted a basic blocking. And then I look at my board and I go, oh, yeah. I already bought a basic melee. So I don't get to do it uh, this turn. So uh, a unique feature of the game, you only get to buy one card per turn. Um, I have no idea if there's other cards that l allow you to purchase extra, uh, extra things. But anyhow, that's how that works. Yep. And like we said before, the green box in the bottom right is you gain that, and the red is you pay that. Right. And pretty much all the ones in the resource area are red. So right. You're paying. And so, and again, like if you can see that I will play the melee yeah. that I played. I'll put that over there. Okay. And then the last thing you can do are play ability cards on your turn, which is the blue background cards. Uh, they can be played at any time. Uh, though they're useful at certain times, like whatever's on their card. Right. Uh, you activate it immediately and resolve it before the player continues. So you can't play it, do something else, and then activate it, uh, which kind of makes sense. Uh, you discard it after you use it, and some monster cards actually have a blue box on them. So if you ever kill a monster with it and it makes its way back into your hand, you can play it as an ability card, but it's not counted as an See, ability like card. See, like this one that you will become friends with, <laughs> called the Healing Potion. Healing Potion states, you cannot play this card if you have an acted token on your mercenary card. And then, period, and then it says, you may heal two, but cannot exceed your total, then immediately play another healing potion card. Then place an acted counter on your mercenary card. This card may only be acquired after immediately killing a monster. So if none of that made sense, basically, real to, to sum up what they said, this is the only thing you can do on your turn. Aside from move. <laughs> Aside from, well, you can still do defenses and stuff like that, because that doesn't count as yeah. an action. And you can move. Right, and you can move. But, uh, but basically, using this... You can use, it, this says you can use multiples, but you're putting one of these on your guys as soon as you do it. Yeah. And then one thing that I didn't mention yet and was going to mention later, but after you do an attack, you place an active token on your right. mercenary. My, my melee would have done that too so that I remember that I can't, I, I can't do anything else. Yep. So that's everything that a mercenary can do. So on the mercenary turn, like I said, it starts with the first player. They do all their stuff. Then the next player clockwise until all the mercenaries have gone. So if you were paying attention and you were like, hey, Mickey and Jeb, you guys started on the back row and you said you can only move one. Yes, nobody's going to be able to hit anything the first turn. Basically, you're, you, get a, you get a turn to... Uh, set up a little bit yeah um because basically as far as i would be unless i chose not to move up is there monsters are gonna and you're gonna see in a second they're gonna move up the next time the action will start happening yeah so after all the mercenaries go it's now the monster turn uh the first thing you do is resolve effects like we did with the mercenaries but this time For if the there's monsters. anything on monsters uh, if a monster dies during this, like if they're burned or something or poisoned, if the monster dies, uh, it just goes to the monster discard. It doesn't go to a player's discard because the player didn't kill it. It was the effect that did. Uh, after that, you have to determine the order that the monsters are going to move and attack. And the order is in the book, 
the order that monsters will You'll move. You'll memorize this real fast yeah, once you play. It'll be melee monsters move, uh, which are the red backgrounds, melee monsters attack, champion monster, they're either melee or ranged. If they're melee, they act as a melee monster would. If they're ranged, they act like a ranged monster. Then ranged monsters move, then ranged monsters attack. So it's basically melee move, melee attack, champion, ranged move, range attack. Right. Now there's some, there's some, uh, there's a few details here that you need to pay attention to while we explain this. Okay, so uh, let's move monsters. These are all melee monsters, these are ranged monsters. So, um, and here's a good example, uh, we'll talk about a couple things here, but alright, so uh, this guy isn't going to move because he's already engaged. This guy is not, so he will move up. This guy is not engaged with anybody, so he will move up. And this guy is not engaged with anybody, so we're going to choose to move him up too. Now, if you remember, uh, just as a side note, um, the trying to get away. If I, next turn, tried to get away from him, this guy would swing, this guy would swing, and that guy would swing. So, just... Mm, just yeah. <laughs> point of note there, that's a bad situation to be in. But I wouldn't be there in the, this point in the game anyways. Alright, so, now melee monsters attack. Oh, look at the blue guy's going to get slammed. Alright, so actually, I would get hit by 4, 4, and 4. I actually have 4 shields in my hand. I could play them, and as Jeb said, your defensive cards go here, right Jeb? Yes. Because it's one monster at a time. Because defense cards say I have a four defense for this whole turn. So I have successfully blocked yep. all my attackers. Yep. However, if I had only had three, each of those guys would have hit me for one. So the way the attack works is attack value minus defense value equals damage done. And that works for heroes and monsters um, both ways. All right. Um, there's no champions on the board so we don't have to worry about that. All these guys would get activated tokens. That goblin he, can't do he anything. Moved, he, well he moved yeah. but he can't attack. Now it's the ranged monsters. Now remember Jeb said ranged monsters move. There's a key point here. Ranged monsters only move if they are engaged in melee with somebody. Okay? So, these guys will sit on this back row for the entire game. And, they, their ranged attacks do not have a minimum and maximum. So, as long as you are not in melee with them, they can hit you. Yep. Or Well, they have a melee attack, so if... If they are, and uh, there are certain you, times, there are like certain times that out and But this guy can shoot at anybody on uh, on the board. So on actually on the first monster turn of the game, if there's a range guy out, he'll be able to do damage possibly. Right, and like I said, he doesn't have that. So the mercenaries, I guess, can decide. Uh, that's where first player, well not actually, that's where the die comes into play. Yes, uh, uh, when the the ranged monster attacks, uh, you'll yeah. roll the d20. And this way, none of the players can gang up on another player if you were playing uh, competitively Competitive, yeah. or whatever. So it's totally random, he rolls the die, he gets a 1, and I know a 1 is a miss. Yep. Alright, but so, there's a range in the book, Jeb, can yeah. go over that real quick. In the book, there's two different sets of effects. I, depending on what you roll, depending on the player count, right, is uh, what you would consult the book. It's not in a chart. You just look. It says if it's a two or four player game or a three player game. Right. Anyway, uh, if you roll a one to four for a two or four player, well, we'll do what we're playing. Uh, three player co cooperative. One to five is a miss. A six to ten is a hit on the first player. Eleven to fifteen uh, a hit on the second player, and a sixteen to twenty is a hit on the third player. Right. So, uh, obviously on this it missed, but if it got to the second, uh, you know, the second layer or whatever, it, it would be the first player. And then from there you count clockwise 
to figure out the player that yep. he hit. Um, his ranged attack does three damage. Uh, let's, you know, if let's just say that this was going after the green guy. He had nothing in his hand. He would take three. If he had some shields, he could play his shields, yeah. uh, and he would be be okay. And then after the range guy attacks, he gets an activated token. Yep. And then one thing we didn't mention, but it probably seems obvious to you, is that if a monster has an active token and it's the monster's turn, they can't do anything. Right. So monsters uh, are able to retaliate and lash out. Those are kind of the, the special out-of-turn attacks that they do. The lashing out happens when you're adjacent and try to move away. They get to attack, and then the retaliate is if you attack them, they can attack back if right. they don't have an enacted token on them. Do they? I can't remember what the rules say. Did do they say it's optional? Like, do the does the player, or does do they automatically retaliate? I think they automatically retaliate. I don't remember seeing an optional. So basically, nobody controls them. Right, that's right. So because yeah. we, you, you and I were trying to figure out when it would be good to not attack and let them attack yeah. rather than swinging and causing a retaliate. Yeah. And there is strategy. I mean, we're not going to get into that. We, it actually kind of became clear on when some of these things would come into play. Um, so when we were describing me attacking here, we didn't do it, but he would have already, he would have automatically swung back. Um, I would have played those shields. Um, so... In theory, this guy wouldn't have attacked during the monster turn. Only these two would have. I still blocked him. But just just so you understand the order of play, that's how all that would have resolved. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the monster turn. Once all the monsters have acted tokens on them, the monster turn is done. And then it is the end of... It's kind of... The wording is turn, but it's kind of like the round so well not if you're using round synonymously with area but you could use it's it the end area. of the mercenaries it's the end of the monster turn i don't know it's hard to maybe that is why they use the area yeah. because it kind of is like a because uh, it, it's the end of the cycle in, <laughs> anyway it, it's and there's called, multiple rounds in an area yeah. So, it, in the rule book, it's called end of turn, but it's yeah. after the mercenary turn and after the monster turns right. have been done. It says all players have a chance to acquire a card, so if you haven't before, that was your last chance. Right. Uh, you check to see if any monsters remain. If there are no monsters on the board, then that's the end of the area, but right. the situation we're in now means it's we just start Clearly, it's turn. not the end of the area. Yeah. Nikki's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> After you check if any monsters are there, you're going to discard. All players are going to discard their hands and everything they acquire. So I had the range tack left, and I acquired this card, so it's in the discard. And I think you lose all the defenses. I do. So every in everything you played, yeah. you hadn't said that yet. That's why I didn't move it. Uh, and then after that, all active tokens are removed from everything on the board. Right. So all these would come off. There used to be one on me. We took it off. Yeah. So the monsters are... Ba so basically all the cards have been refreshed. Yep. And then it says, start the new turn. So we would just go back to the beginning and start uh, the mercenary turn. Right. With the first player. Remember, the first player card did not move yet. Right. That only happens when you clear the area. And then... If it is the end of the area, which means there's no monsters on the field, you check to see if there's any monsters left in the deck. If there are none in the deck, then it's the end of the game. Otherwise, you move to the or you you're going to discard the area feature card, which uh, since we're out of this area now, it goes away. The mercenaries are removed from the field. And then a new area begins, which right. starts with drawing the area card and all that. Right. Passing the player, right. the first so, player, and all that. So, so basically, if it is like if all this stuff is gone, you take your mercenary cards off. All the monsters are off, and it's like you starting the game over again, except 
now there's a new first player, they're going to get to put the first, they're going to get to draw the monster cards, repopulation, etc., etc. Yep, and you just keep doing that until everybody is minus health or you beat the game, or beat the adventure, whatever right. you want to call it. So, uh, the next thing I have is how combat works. And I don't know if we did, we exactly went through everything, but I mean, it, it's pretty... I, I think it's pretty simple. We uh, did explain it. If you want to just reiterate it, it's 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 fine. Um, okay, so for combat, what you do, it, it's always going to be the same for the way combat works. The first thing you do is make sure the attacker can attack. So if they have an acted token or they're minus health, then they can't, can't attack. Then you check the attack value. So if it's melee, it's the sword. If it's uh, range, it's the bow. And for players, it's however many cards you play. You just add up everything. Right. Uh, then you check the defense of the target. So if you look at one of the monsters... Like everything out of the board right now is zero. But if it was a monster attacking a person, you would count their number of shields. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the number of shields on the card cards. Cards. Right. Uh, the next thing you do is subtract the defense from the attack value. So if I had an attack of 4 and it had a defense of 0, 4 minus 0 is 4, and that's the number of wounds that go on to whoever got attacked. Uh, the next thing is the target may retaliate. So if the target does not have an acted token on them, they have the ability to attack back. So monsters can, monsters will always retaliate if able, and they also retaliate if you kill them. So it's right. not so, like they go yeah. away yep. without a fight. Okay. Um, mercenaries can choose to retaliate if, if they're able to. Mercenaries cannot retaliate against a lash out. So if you're running away from a monster and it hits you, you can't yep. attack it right. while you're leaving. Uh, you put an acted token on the person who retaliates because they're doing something. Right. Because uh, if you didn't, you'd get two attacks a turn. Yeah. And then if a monster has wounds equal to its health or more, uh, it's killed. And then for killing the monster, if a monster is killed, it's able to re retaliate, like I said. Uh, all the tokens and counters are removed from it, and it is placed in the discard pile of the person who killed it. Right. If no mercenary killed it, then it goes to the monster discard. The player who killed it gets the experience from the monster. Right. And the way, so basically, if I killed an orc, this has a four, so I would write on my piece of paper that I have four. Now, some at other points in the game, I could um, use that to buy, um, so like this is three experience, three experience, these, this is four, but then I would cross out that four and put it on there. And didn't, didn't you say something about getting... Uh, one experience point for yes, something. Yes, if, if you attack a monster and put one or more wounds on it, you get one experience point. Okay, so like point. when I hacked at this guy, I would have got one experience yes. point. Right, yep. okay. So that's another way to, um, which I'll just tell you because you might want to put it in your memory banks. Jeb and I overlooked that the first time we played. Probably would have sped the first you know, a little yeah. bit of the deck building up, or at least given us a, a few more earlier choices yeah. because we had forgotten that part and we were hacking away and we waited for experience points until we actually killed stuff. Well, we probably hit three or four times anyways. We could have started getting some of these better cards, yeah. um, possibly because, remember, it's only one card at a time. So, um, there's, I don't know, the, the choices in this game are really, really interesting because that one card limit really makes you think about what you want in your deck. Yeah. And I actually overlooked that if you don't kill the monster and put wounds on it, you get an experience. Like, when I'm reading it here, I looked over it. It's, oh. <laughs> it's on my paper, so it's easy to miss. Just remember, if you do damage to a monster, you get an experience point. Not per damage. Just you get one. a experience point yeah. for hitting a monster. Yeah. Okay, and then for the end of the game... Uh, if you, the way winning works, if you're playing competitive, if the area or if if the whole adventure is completed 
what you do is count up all your victory points in your deck, which is your deck, your hand, your discard, like all the cards you've acquired in the game. You count up all your victory points. You get that total. The next thing you do is you get one victory point for every leftover five experience that you have. And then you lose one victory point for each health needed to get you back to one if you're in minus health. So at the end of the game, it's pretty much add up all your points in your deck, add up the points from your leftover experience, and then subtract anything if you were in minus health. And then whoever has the most experience or the most victory points is the winner. Uh, for cooperative play, the winning works when all the monsters are dead and everybody is not in minus health. So right. as long as one person finishes the game in positive health, then it's a win. And then you can still count up victory points to see who's the winner winner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then losing is if all the players are ever in minus health, the game is over. And the only other thing I have is this one random thing about the different game plays that you can do. Uh, if there's two people playing, each of them can play as two mercenaries. If there's two people playing, you can do four singles. So I guess that's uh, you control two people, but you're still trying to have one person do better than the other. Oh, okay. Uh, and then a five-player game is four people are mercenaries, and the fifth player controls the monsters. So those are the different uh, different modes. The different there you game go. Modes. modes. I like that word. Yeah. And other than that, I think that's everything for. Uh, that's pretty much gameplay. Teaching you how to play the game. until you see us, uh, you know, play it and forget stuff that we just taught you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways. That's an overview of the game. Um, we will we will come back and do a, a playthrough um, with uh, three people, and I mean maybe four if we can find four. But right now it's probably going to be three. And uh, I think we're going to do competitive or cooperative, right? Yeah, because uh, in competitive you can swing at each other if I remember correctly. No, you, you should can't, You can't. Yeah, you can't oh. swing at each other, but you can. You mess with them by like taking their kills and stuff like that. Oh, that's right, because yeah. it's because it's whoever does the final blow. Yeah. So, you know, I could be sitting by a monster and knowing that Jeb is sitting behind me, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna move away and take the hit just because I don't want Jeb to get that kill. Yep. And or that, whatever. That would probably make the game go longer. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so probably. I think we're gonna end up doing a three-player cooperative.